Okay, these are two stoves I was playing around with for lightweight stoves. Good. No, it's not lighting. Maybe it is lighting. Just playing around with some ideas here. This one I can put the stove on right away because it has a pot stand. But the other one becomes the pot stand, so it actually has to get hot enough before I can put it on, which I think it is now. Uh, I'm going to do that from this side instead of reaching over the other stove. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Let's try that a different way. I don't know if that's balanced enough. Alright, well we'll see what we get there. That's a lot of flame. They actually may be affecting each other too close together. I don't know if I can move either of them. Nope, can't move them. So, I'm just going to let them go and see how they burn. Not going to do any times yet. Not sure if they'll even bring water to a boil. Now that the priming tray's died out on that one, that one's doing a little better. Not too overly hot. It hot. And this one, I don't know if it's even going to work. It's just not enough flame underneath there, I don't think. Interesting, though. The flame seems to be right enough to the one side there, and it looks pretty centered. Eh, maybe not. So we'll see if we get a boil out of either of these. Just some new designs that I've been playing with. This one is actually a penny stove. Very similar to um, most of your penny stoves out there. I do have the jets on the inside and not the outside. Um, I think it's kind of like the mini atomic. Um, well, it's not like that because it doesn't have a screw on top. It's not carbon filled. It's just two cans glued together with some epoxy and holes drilled in the top so but just an experiment and this one over here is just a single wall little tea candle but it's made of tin not aluminum so it's very sturdy as far as strength goes I don't think it could be crushed but it's still small and could be wobbly uh, it's actually calmed down enough that I can test it yeah, maybe too little wobbly to be using for anything. And it requires some kind of priming tray to get it going because it is a tin. And that the tin metal takes a long time to heat up and hold the heat in. So that's why you need the priming tray to get it going. Had another stove idea that I was playing with. Never worked out, so I may play with some more. I may come up with something, I may not. It was just an aluminum canister that I found uh, at the thrift store. Uh, it was just a candle holder, and I drilled the center set of holes here in it, tried to burn it, wouldn't stay lit. So I drilled the top set of holes in it to try and get the fumes up higher towards the top, wouldn't stay lit. So I drilled some bottom holes in it, so I had a diamond shape, wouldn't stay lit. So I drilled some bigger diamond holes, the bottom one not bigger, uh, would stay lit then but never got hot enough to bring a pot to a boil. So eh, I might play with it some more, but try and find something else. Neat little aluminum, very lightweight, uh, 10. Would be a single wall stove. Uh, I don't know how I could make it a double wall stove, but it was a neat little design of a piece of aluminum 10 that I found. Instead of the metal ones, it was aluminum. So I thought it might hold heat better and burn better, but it did not. Got a lot of these laying around still. Um, my Cardinals lost tonight. They were in the playoffs. They were in a wild card game. And they lost, but nonetheless, got a lot of these cans laying around still. And I haven't. I've got a bunch of those stoves where you just cut the top off, cut the bottom off, and put it inside itself. I didn't want to make any more of those because I've got a bunch of those laying around. 
I've got a couple of the Venom stoves where you press it down inside of itself, kind of like the BIOS, very much like it is the BIOS, where you press it down inside of itself into one, to double wall stove with one piece. And I didn't want to make any more of those because I've got a bunch of them, but I'm trying to come up with another idea for these types of bottles. Uh, if anybody's got any additional ideas other than the uh, cut the top off and drop it in and the cut it off way up here and press it down inside of itself using another can. If anybody's got any other ideas, let me know because i got a couple of those bottles that I just want to make a stove out of but I haven't come up with anything yet. Another container that I have a bunch of is these. Um, they're very similar in that they're a stronger aluminum, but they don't stretch very well. Uh, I tried to, I put the tops and, you know, cut the top off, cut the bottom off and put them inside. And those make good double wall burners. They're smaller than the other bottle. Let me show you a comparison. In comparison, you can see that it's a little bit smaller. Not a lot smaller, but just a little bit smaller. So they make smaller containers. They're great for putting underneath the Heineken cans with a double wall. But I was trying to come up with something else for these as well. The bottom's a different shape. It's not a perfectly concave shape. It kind of pinches in and comes over and then pinches back down. And um, so I don't know if anybody's got any ideas for these kind of stoves that they think would work. Uh, let me know. I've got a bunch of these laying around too. I might have a boil on one of these. No, just making a lot of noise on that one. Nah, there's bubbles in there, but not boil yet. And not even close. Oh, that one's filled to the top with water. I have more than two cups in there, so that may not come to a boil. It's right up to this last room up here. Uh, I got a bunch of these laying around, but who doesn't, you know? So, I don't really like the idea of having a huge stove like that. It serves no purpose for me, that big of a stove. When I go camping, I usually cook for myself on these stoves. Uh, it's a personal hobby. If I'm cooking for a group of people, I have a lot of big camping stoves, so... Running out of fuel. I didn't fill it up, though. So that one definitely will get to a boil. It was... It was, uh... Eh, bubbling away in there, but no rolling boil like I like to see. So that one will get there. I don't really keep a time on that. Camera's up to about eight minutes, at nine minutes, I'm sorry, so... This one, even though it has extra water in it, not even a bubble. So... Yeah, and I can still grab the top of it. Don't think that's going to work very well. The whole idea... Let's see if I can show it to you. Is that it worked like the other stove. Luckily, all I'm doing there is melting my wood. That wasn't too smart. There must have been something in there. That's going to stink up the basement. So I was trying to get it to work like the single wall stoves because it has little jets on the side. It's really too small to see even. I was trying to get it to work like a single wall stove and I'm just not having any luck with it. Too hot. It does light, but it doesn't really create a jet. It's more of a, uh, just a bunch of fire coming out the edges. And I think part of that's the windscreen. I'm sorry, the priming tray. It's just not, it's a slow heat. If you're looking to let's just keep something warm. But again, it's not very steady. It's kind of a wobbly. Yeah, well. Don't know if I'll have any use for that. Alright, that's all for this video. Neither of them actually got a full boil going, so... We'll have to do another video. Look oh, that flame on the bottom of there. That's just crazy. That tells me a lot of fumes are sticking up underneath there with the evaporation of the fuel, the fuel up into there. This one definitely could have got to a boil if I had enough fuel in it, but...
it needs a little work. Uh, it's not very flat, and it needs a priming tray, so I'll work on that one. It's too hot to grab still. So put this one out. No, not that easy. There we go. Kind of melted that thing. Alright, that's all for this video. Bye for now.